they weren't worth it. Nobody goes to those. When I went to the um, uh, Orlando Travel Goods Show, that was a, an industry show, international show, 2,500 bucks for a 10 by 10 space. But guess what? Had traffic, I um, had, uh, was on NBC News, I got the, the solutions catalog sales. That made something happen. Those little rinky-dink mom and pop shows, not worth it. So that's my two cents on trade shows. So this is $1,500 that I got almost nothing out of. So um, this is the one, the travel goods that did good. Actually, it wasn't even 10 by 10. That's probably 8 by 8. Um, it's pretty small. And, you know, I, I kept revising my, my um, booth every time. And then the last one, I've done one more since this. This was in 05. That was the Electronic Retailing Association, which Roland told me about. He's done a lot of work with them. Um, they accepted me into their, I don't know, their new product showcase. And, um, boy, was I ticked off I didn't win anything. You know who won best product in show? It's ridiculous. This woman, she didn't, she didn't have patent pending anything. She didn't have anything. She was sitting there playing this ridiculous Christmas music, chatting about, what'd you have for lunch today? Do you have a lipstick I can borrow? She was so annoying. She won. Her product was, nobody's set up yet. I didn't have to take any pictures afterwards. Her product was a jewelry tree. A what? A jewelry tree. It's just like, and it was a homemade version made of plastic. She had the tackiest booth you've ever seen. So homemade, crafty. It was tacky, and she won. Uh, now, when you say jewelry tree, do you it was, like? It was, a, it was a plastic tree thing with like little teeth coming off of it. It's kind of shaped like a Christmas tree. The with little teeth, the whole and rings and like necklaces, that. and I think it's spun around, which it's is fine, novel. but I mean, it's not even novel, though, so many of those things have already existed, yeah. yeah. No, and I don't, she never did anything with it. When, when she found out she won, she, I looked, I was like, congratulations, that's so exciting. And she's like, is that good? What am I supposed to do now? <laughs> I said, you go home, you write press releases, you do all that. She, she was clueless. I, I was so ticked off. Oh my gosh, that was Vegas. I would be. That was expensive. You can imagine it was Vegas. The fly there. Um, so uh, anyway, I think there's one. Okay, this is another thing. The last two slides, I think, just give an idea of just all this stuff. And this is so so small a sampling. Physical files. This uh, categorizing. Like I said have to have organization. Absolutely, because there's so much you have to keep track of. And you know, I categorize them between production, administration, and art, and contacts, because you know, you have to be able to find these things. And these are just, like, these are just the physical files of, that are in my file cabinet. Which, um, and then it gets so out of control. It's really out of control. In fact, I never even used this file cabinet anymore. I've moved on. And then the next one, Glenn, those are physical files, internet bookmarks. All of this just has to do with my website. Just managing my website. The quick commerce, um, the, you know, when I have to, when I get an order online and um, I have to go collect the funds, the, the credit card funds, I log into there. <coughs> Value Web is my web host. Link Point Central is an old one. Meva Merchant is my shopping cart. PayPal, AdWeb, AdWords. All that is just to manage the website. And then over here on this side are the, just the, <coughs> the folders for, you know, when you come across a website that's useful. All those folders have tons and tons of links in them. It just is overwhelming. So this is, again, just an idea of all the crap you have to, I mean, y'all know. It's just really a lot. And then the next slide shows um, the physical, these are the folders on my hard drive that separate things like, you know, accounting and admin, competition, manufacturing. Like in the manufacturing folder, you can see I've got all these production specs of the different companies I've worked with. That's, that, those are the North Carolina people here and here and here and it changed. And anytime I made a pattern change, I got, I made new specs. So they're all in a folder and um, just keep it all organized. And then the marketing, like the printed materials, all that's got to be organized, business card and labels and everything. 
website administration, the keywords and the special stuff for that. And then the photographs, thousands of photographs, thousands to come up with all the pictures for the web, for the, just the packaging and the website. You know, you'd have one photo shoot and it's like going to take hundreds of pictures to get the right shot. Um, well, now you saw what I had before. That's, that's the last slide, right, Glenn? Yes. I think so. Um, I do have a movie on there. Um, also, when we sold that house, I took immediately 10 grand for Headbone. And then um, we used the money to build a, a, a separate garage, the whole upstairs of which is my office, which is sweet. So I took a picture of it today, I took a movie of it, and we live on the water down here in, in Solomon. It's right here, if you click this movie, this will show you me walking in my office. and It's pretty nice, I have to say, I'm pretty happy about it. But um, it takes a lot of room. I've got a lot of buckwheat stored right now that are in a couple of, couple of the garages. And That's a quick time, I guess it is. Yeah, it's gonna be okay? Oh, it's, it's reading it off the disk, so it's going to be fun. We'd have to copy it to the hard drive. I could do that. Like but I took three short little movies. But you get the idea on that first one. It's only like, I don't know, 35 seconds long. But, um... It's, it's a question. What is buckwheat and why is it used? Buckwheat is hypoallergenic. It is, um, it's something that's... It, uh, buckwheat, the, what's inside it, it's a buckwheat hull. So buckwheat itself is used for flour. It's a food. But the hull of it is, is extracted in the process of, of milling that hull. The buckwheat, if you want to see it, I, I can give you a handful. I can just, this has a zipper, I can open it up, but it'll make a mess. Um, it's hypoallergenic and it's soft. Doesn't make you sweat. Um, and it's a good it's a good filler material and otherwise it wouldn't do anything. It's actually used as mulch too. But um, mm -hmm. yes, and it's malleable. Yes. I've got to uh, I've got a debt, but I wanted to say that mm -hmm. to be commended, you've got a great product. Thank you. This is something that you. It's a have. lot. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I realize it does take a lot. You, you have to be crazy or something. But, you know, you, it's your baby and you, you want to work on it. Yeah. You said you sold, you, you like, you tried to sell the idea to the automotive and what other industry did you say? Chiropractic. They are being sold at chiropractor's offices. Have you considered Staples? No, I haven't gone there yet. Really? Mm -mm. Oh, I think this would make a great office supply. I mean, yeah. you see the, half, half the stores like bloody office desks and chairs and it's like, you know, this wouldn't be a perfect attachment to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, sure, a lot of the trays are comfortable, but with some of those right. you know, plastic or metal, you know, reclining yeah, back it's, it's good for the for the low back chairs, some of the very for the lumbar. Ones, ones that aren't like claustrophobic or anything like that, but ones that are just as simple like that, those oval backs or something like that. Uh -huh. yeah, you drink that across or something like that, you know, uh, it, it makes the uh, cheap chairs that much uh, right? bearable. Upstairs. It's like 860 square feet of the building is 26 by 32 and the whole thing is my office. So this is walking into my storage closet. It's eight by five. Yeah. So that's got all the samples of the fabrics and stuff and plus the, my current stash. By the way, <clears throat> I fill these as the orders come in. Um, actually, if we, I don't know if I showed it on this video. If you walk in here, that's my desk straight ahead and the sample you've seen on the trade shows right there. That's where my husband, that's supposed to be a kitchen one day, but anyway, um, over here, that's my dancing pole. <laughs> we have good parties at my house, let me tell you. Um, I don't strip though. <laughs> so that's all the space, and, and there's a lot of space up above that I use for storage. Right now there's a lot of, not a lot of stuff because I'm almost out of head bones, I need to order more. But anyway, they come flat. So they ship to me flat. I fill them as the orders come in. And um, I can, I'll show you in a minute. If we actually look at the other um, video, Glenn, there's a close-up of the very low-tech method I use to fill these things. So it's not glamorous. I guess that's the point a lot of people might think when they're just starting out. I mean, I thought that it was supposed to be glamour. You know, it's not. It's people working in their garages. Yeah, this next one. I think it's in that one. I'll 
paste that.